Welcome to Electro Line, and now we're going to take a look and see how we get our first maximum in a diffraction pattern. So what we need to do here to obtain a diffraction pattern, or at least our first maximum, is to have a slit of width A in such a way that when we look up at a particular angle to the screen, the screen is back here at a distance L away from the, from the, from the uh, opening right here. And let's say we're looking for the distance to the first maximum, let's call that Y. And of course we have light coming in through the hole here to the opening um, that has wavelength lambda. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find out where that first maximum occurs. So you have to have a lookup angle in such a way that the first third of the beam will cancel out the second third of the beam. How does that happen? Well, if you have the correct angle so that this extra distance right here is exactly equal to half wavelength and that location right here is exactly one third into the beam. If that's true, then you know that this ray right here at the very top of the beam and this ray right here at the very top of the second one third of the beam, they will be exactly a half a wavelength out of phase and when they're half a wavelength out of phase, they will cancel each other out. The ray right below that will cancel out this ray, the, right, the ray right below that one will cancel out this ray in such a way that the entire first one third of the beam will cancel out the entire second third of the beam so that they're both um, that they both will destructively interfere with each other in such a way that only the very last one-third of the beam will actually make it through and put a bright spot on the screen right there which becomes the first maximum. Since it's only one-third of the beam that gets through instead of the entire beam, you can see that the first maximum have a lot lower intensity than the central maximum because here the entire beam will illuminate the uh, screen over there and there will be no destructive interference at all. But here you can see that two-thirds of the beam has been eliminated through destructive interference in such a way that only one-third of the beam makes it through to make this first maximum. Now where will that, where will that happen on the screen? Well, what we can say here is that we want the extra distance traveled to be equal to a half a wavelength because at that point when they're half wavelengths out of phase they will destructively interfere with each other and we know the requirement for the first maximum is that the extra distance traveled must be a divided by three one third into the beam times the sine of theta and that equals lambda over two in such a way that a sine of theta is equal to three lambda divided by two now for very small angles, and these are usually very small angles, the sine of theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta, so a times the tangent of theta is equal to 3 lambda over 2, and finally the tangent of theta by definition is the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side, notice this is the angle of theta, so it's the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, so this can be written as a times y over l is equal to 3 lambda over 2, and then if we solve this equation for y, we get y is equal to 3 lambda L divided by 2A. And that will be the location for the first maximum. Now we should write down the ones we found so far. Remember for the first minimum, so for the first minimum, the condition was that y was equal to lambda L divided by A. Lambda L divided by A. For the first maximum, as we just now found, y would be equal to 3 lambda L over 2A. All right, so those are the two that we found. Now we're going to find the second minimum, the second maximum, the third minimum, the third maximum, and so forth, and then we'll get a, a feel for what that pattern is. And then we can write the general equation of where our, our max and min uh, locations are on the screen based on the diffraction pattern.